Welcome back ladies and gentlemen and button pressers from all around the world. This is week number three of the Trilogy of Fun. Recently in the local newspapers you've seen that uh, West Nile virus has been detected in our area. So what I want to do is give you a couple facts and a couple tips to help you stay safe this summer. First off, it's important to know that the West Nile virus isn't that crazy. Not a lot of people are breaking out with it. It's just been detected locally. Although there is no known cure to West Nile, or Triple E as the geeks call it, I'm going to cover a couple of handy tips so that you can best prepare yourself for when you find yourself engulfed in a group of mosquitoes. Number one, it's important to know that this is not a new virus. It was discovered in 1937 in Uganda, that's in Africa for you idiots, but was first discovered here in 1999 in our own country in the Big Apple of New York City. I was actually going to go to Africa and film this week's blog, but uh, for fear of being eaten by lions or being kidnapped by Coney, we're going to do it from right here in my backyard again, or as we call this cesspool, Peck's Pond. Now the first and most important part of protecting yourself against the West Nile virus is getting yourself a good uh, bug spray. I'm going to go with Off Deep Woods. Now you're going to want to apply that well. Uh, cover all areas of the skin. <laughs> if you can, try to find one that tastes a little better than this. Another important way of protecting yourself from the West Nile virus is to wear a lot of clothes so the bugs can't actually make contact with your skin. Now since nobody wants to be running around fully dressed and wearing a shawl in the middle of summer, I'm going to give you a few other important tips. Number one, if you sweat a lot like a Chinese man trying to get his driver's license, what you're going to want to do is take a lot of showers. Nobody wants to be around a guy that smells like an Indian overdosing on curry. When showering, you want to stay away from all those cute little good smelling body washes that you're used to using. Bath and Body Works isn't going to help you here. You also don't need to go to campfires all dolled up smelling like perfume. You don't want to have so much perfume on that you smell like Mary Kay Latorno getting ready to teach algebra. At a backyard bonfire, this is unneeded. This makes you high risk and that's why nobody wants to sit next to you. For safety measures, stand next to somebody that's smoking a cigarette. Although I know that can be disgusting, this may be the only time the secondhand smoke's going to save your life. Now remember, if approached by a mosquito and you see one on your skin, don't worry. You are still one million times the size of a mosquito and you can kill upon contact. Don't be afraid to strong arm them little rascals. Now to be fair, this virus was just detected. We don't have enough statistics dating back in time to show us how long this virus has been here. You may have had it here for 50 years, so don't freak out. I mean honestly, how many people do you know that's died from West Nile virus? Besides an itch, a mosquito bite's not that bad. Although you ever get bit and go to slap a mosquito and you get somebody else's blood on you? Ew. That may be the worst thing. I'm kind of scared of getting AIDS, matter of fact. Mosquitoes are scary all the way around. I'm sick of talking about them, let's move on. Since last week I've been getting a lot of messages and some fan mail, I guess you can call it fan mail. I just want to cover a little bit of the feedback that people have been giving me uh, since last week. First email comes from Cher, 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 Cheryl. First one comes from Cheryl from Australia. I watch your vlogs and they are hilarious. If I had your number, it wouldn't be a question of call you maybe. You are way too handsome to let leave the club alone. We would go together and I would take care of that horny as a kid problem you talked about in the first week. XOXL. Let's talk about this for a second, Cheryl. You sound like a hussy. Chances are there's most likely no way I would ever leave the club with you. And what's with the XOXO? I never really understood X's and O's, unless you're playing football, of course. Hugs, kisses. I prefer vagina and bum bum. Vagina, bum bum. In that case, maybe we might leave together. You never know. If I'm drinking red wine, it's like Viagra. Me and you are heading out of here. Second, this one comes from Sue from Pittsfield. Mike, would you be interested in advertising for any local businesses? Absolutely not. There's not a goddamn thing I would do. I would not sell out for any local advertising. And now that we got that taken care of, let's move on to the next email. Next one comes from Jackie in Ohio. Ohio, there we go. I find your vlogs hilarious, although I'm not a fan of the Michael J. Fox comment from last week. Really simple, bitch? They're just jokes. Don't get all up in arms. See, that's the problem today. A lot of people need to laugh a little bit more, okay? There's a lot of serious shit going on in the world that we don't need to cry about it. We need to laugh at it and move on. When you stop laughing, you stop living. And I don't want to stop living, do you? Plus, Michael J. Fox saw last week's comments. He looked at it and laughed. Matter of fact, he was clapping the whole time. Although he couldn't help it. This next one comes from Berkshire Gas. Do you ever plan on paying your gas bill? Matter of fact, from everybody in Berkshire County that has Berkshire Gas, we'd like to extend a big fuck you. Now that we've covered some safety and health tips, and we've gone through last week's emails, I really want to get into what grinds my gears. First off, I want to talk a little bit about Facebook. Oh yeah. You ever have to deal with one of these snotty assholes that's always like, oh, you're always on Facebook. Oh, every time I go on Facebook, I see your stuff. No shit, you minion. I'm on unemployment. What else am I going to do? Isn't it funny how half the people that complain about you being on Facebook all the time are the first ones to know what you're doing always? They know half of the shit that's going on before you do in your own life? 
How do you do that if you're never on Facebook? I saw one of these e-cards that says, oh, I'm glad I go to work every day and pay in so that you can collect for free and sit around on your iPhone. Yeah, it is nice. Maybe you should get back to work and stop watching this. What's with the poking feature on Facebook? I mean, has anybody ever got anywhere off of poking somebody? I remember this one time I saw this chick online. And I'm like, I'm going to try out this poking feature. So I'm poking her like a virgin having sex for the first time. Poke, 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 poke. I'm poking her so much I'm scared this bitch is going to get pregnant. I'm like, yeah, I poked this bitch 57 times. How could she not like me? And for the people saying poking gets you nowhere, well, I got blocked, deleted, and a restraining order on one day. Top that. What's with the IM feature? I mean, honestly, it's only people looking to hook up or cheat on their spouses. I got a friend who lands tons of ass off of Facebook. He calls it the request, message, execute theory. First, you request them to be your friend. Second, you send them a message to see if they want to get together. Third, you execute. I mean, ladies, you know they're only messaging you for one thing, right? Oh, you change your default picture to some slutty picture and now everybody's messaging you? They probably just want to be friends. <laughs> and what's with all the slutty pictures anyways if you're going to play the prude? Oh, this is me grocery shopping and I only see a picture of your ass? Oh, look at here's my two little new dogs or here's my little kittens and all you got is cleavage hanging out? What's the real message here? The fact of the matter is if you're dressed up like a slut taking slutty pictures and putting them online for everybody to look at, what do you think the guys are going to do? It's just how we're built. Don't put up a picture on Facebook of your butterfly tattoo on your pussy and expect somebody to bring you out to dinner. Oh, you got 600 likes on that picture? I bet you 555 of them were guys. They really weren't interested in the butterfly. So stop acting like goody two-shoes and play your part, Sally. I don't know why I can't find any good guys in this town. Is chivalry dead? Nobody will hold the door for me. No, bitch, I'll hold your pussy open while you slam a dildo in it. I thought that's what you want from your pictures on Facebook. All I'm saying is if you got a tramp stamp and it's a bunch of vines that go together and it looks like an arrow pointing your asshole, we're not the culprits. Oh my god, it's hot as fuck out here. I'm sweating like a virgin senorita at a donkey show. <laughs> Smells like West Nile. Here's another thing that burns my ass. People not watching the Olympics. I mean, it's one of the greatest things that our country could do and people are turned into other things like Judge Judy. It's a fact that during the last Olympics, more people watched American Idol than watching the Olympics. At the same time, what? You get a place like the Cook Islands who has three athletes in the whole Olympics. There's 11,000 people total population in the Cook Islands and every one of them motherfuckers will walk there to see it or swim just to get there. Your lazy ass can't flip back on the remote just to get over and see who's about to win the next gold instead of seeing Rupert Stutter stutter his words. I mean, what is it? Ladies, you jealous of these girls that are playing pro beach volleyball? They got their banging asses? Or fellas, you jealous of Michael Phelps' perfect physique? What is it? I mean, honestly, name 10 people that were in the last Olympics. Any country. I'll wait. No? I mean, these kids worked their whole life to get here. And you want to change the channel because some homeless kid from down the street decided he could sing? Fuck that. These guys are making history in the name of our country, and you're more concerned about some bum that's never going to sell records or even go silver? Something's wrong with that. I'm at the bar at a friend's house. I make everybody stand up, take their hat off, put their hand over their heart when the national anthem's playing. Everybody looks at me like I'm a weirdo. There's a lot of pride behind that song, and a lot of people had to die for it to be played every year. Okay? So at least for the 45 seconds it's playing, act like you care. I mean, seriously, 10 of our kids, America's kids, are going to die today in battle for you, for you to have your freedom, for you to watch American Idol. You get off your fat ass for 45 seconds to listen to the national anthem? Come on. What is this country coming to? Well, I think this week's lesson's going to be don't try to make a vlog when you're this hungover. In the sun, nevertheless. I really do want to send a big shout out and a thank you to each and every one of you that shared last week's vlog. I want to thank everybody that listened to my song, Mini Bike, last week. Although it's not on YouTube yet, we will be shooting a video for it next month, so you'll see that. Stay tuned. I want to let you know that you can subscribe by pressing that button up there. My channel is youtube.com backslash MikeMac413TV. You can follow me on Twitter at MikeMac413. Same thing on Instagram. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to week three. Hopefully, we'll come back with week number four next week and really turn it up a notch. Until then, for all you people working and paying for my unemployment, get back to work. I got to go. Peace.